Hey, welcome to Church Experience. Thank you so much for joining us today. So glad that you could make it out. If it's your first time with us, we would love to connect with you. The best way for us to do that is if you head over to churchexperience.tv slash connect. It's also a great place to go if you have any questions, any comments, any prayer requests. We would love to hear from you. We'd love to get back to you and we would love to be praying for you. This is the first week of our brand new Unseen Teaching Series, and I believe that if you stick with us through all the weeks of this teaching series, God is going to do some amazing things in and through your life. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Let's get started. Let's all stand. Let's all worship our God together.
the seas Your voice will rise above the seas We will not fear You are still God Here in the waters deep Your hand will always be beneath We will not fear You are still God We lift our eyes We lift our eyes to you most high forever be exalted forever you will be exalted our help will come from you most high forever be exalted forever you will be exalted You are with us. Possibility remains no longer when you speak, and now you're near. You are with us. Oh, we lift our eyes. Before the world began, it wasn't spoken yet. You were still God, and you are still God. After your final breath, it wasn't over yet. You were still God, and you are still God. Before the world began, it wasn't spoken yet. You were still God, and you are still God. No weapon formed again has stopped your promises. You were still God, and you are still God. You were still God, and you are still God. that you're always with us. Before the world began, you were there and you are here with us. Speak to us. We can't go back to the beginning. We can't control what tomorrow will bring. But I know here in the middle is the place where you promise to be I'm not enough I'm 
unless you come, will you meet me here again? Cause all I want is all you are, will you meet me here again? As I walk now through the valley, let your love rise above every fear. Like the sun shaping the shadow in my weakness, your glory.
invite your presence to this place. We thank you that you are the God who is with us. You're with us in the mountaintops. You're with us in the valleys. Through the struggles and the pains, through the moments of victory, you're always there. We thank you, Lord, that you go before us and that today we have victory in your name. Speak to us now in this hour. Through your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. When I'm alone, I fight my thoughts. At work, I choose to be different. Even in my own home, I have to decide to live with character. People around me want me to do things I'm not comfortable with. So our family drove out to the beach the other day. And we decided to walk the pier, and I'm enjoying this time, this lovely night with my wife and my four children, and just having a great time, but we decided to head out, and so as we're leaving, we walk right past the public restrooms. I decided I'm going to run in real quick, use the restroom before we get in the vehicle and head out. So I go into the, the men's restroom, and my wife decides to take advantage of this moment, and as I go into the men's restroom, she yells in after me, hey, Brandon. Hey, could you answer me real quick? Hey, Brandon. Now, the reason why she's doing this is because I have clearly taught her man code for bathrooms. See, she doesn't know man code for restrooms because she grew up, of course, as a woman. And in a woman's bathroom, I mean, you can chat it up. You can be setting one stall next to the other and you can talk. It is perfectly normal. In fact, every movie you've ever seen, you've seen the two women in the restroom doing their makeup. And they're, and they're talking and getting to know each other's life story. And women, I'm just saying, this does not happen in a men's restroom. <laughs> when you're standing there doing your business, you just know. Part of man code is you do not talk to the man next to you. In fact, there shouldn't even be a man next to you because if you walk in and there's three urinals, you do not choose in any circumstance the middle one. <laughs> if you walk in and no one's in there, you go to the right or you go to the left. And if someone is at one of either the right or the left, you do not choose the one next to them in the middle. <laughs> you go as far away as you possibly can to the other side. This is just man code. Every, every guy knows this. But the most important part of it is that you do not talk to the other guy when you're standing there using the restroom next to him. This is not the time to make new friends. This is not the time to ask about their life story or what they do for work or their greatest hopes and dreams. You just do not talk. You finish up and then you leave. That's it. And my wife knows this and she knows that about me that I yield to the man code when I'm in the bathroom. And so she decided that she would try to get me to talk while I'm in the man, men's restroom. And so she's hollering it. And I am completely ignoring her because there's no excuse for this. I'm completely ignoring her. So she decides to ramp up the intensity. I think to entertain my four little children. And so she says, hey, Brandon, why are you not answering me? Hey, Brandon, hey, with the blue shirt and the khaki shorts. <laughs> I'm looking down like, oh, man, I'm the only dude in here dressed like that. And I'm just shaking my head. I'm smiling. I'm like, Oh, she has no idea. She, she's humiliating me. She's embarrassing me on purpose, on purpose. See, I could not see my wife while I was in the restroom, but she was absolutely in my head. She, she was messing with my head, even though I could not see her. See, you have some unseen voices and unseen influences in your life that you can't see, but they're absolutely in your head. They're absolutely influencing you, messing with you. I mean, you feel it all the time. In fact, this, this whole world is made up of forces that we don't see that influence us. You know, God's word tells us this in the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 12, where it says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. So in other words, the conflict, the challenge, and the adversity of your life, the 
where you think most of your problems are, it's not flesh and blood. It's not in the scene. No, that's, that's not where our biggest battle is. It says, but, our, but it's against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. So it's telling us that our battle is not in what is seen, but is in what is unseen, in the spiritual world around us. We live in a world that's made up of good and evil. Heaven versus hell. God versus the devil. There are spiritual forces, angels and demons, but beyond just that, we, we live in a world where there's so many unseen battles that, that we feel the repercussions of, even though we don't see them with our eye. It's absolutely a part of our world. So I'm really excited about this teaching series, and Unseen. As we talk about the unseen battles in our life, the unseen aspects of our lives, and we talk about prayer specifically. Defeating those unseen battles through the power of prayer. It was Samuel Chadwick who said, the, the one concern the devil has is to keep Christians from praying. He laughs at our toil, he mocks at our wisdom, but he trembles when we pray. He'll do anything he can to keep you from praying because he knows prayer is how you find victory in the world of the unseen. Prayer makes a difference. As it tells us in God's word, the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Now I hope you'll pray for your, your lead pastor during this teaching series. I, I'm so honored to get to teach here in this, this week of this teaching series, but, but it's, it's a challenge to teach on the topic of prayer because it's the thing that's probably most familiar to us as Christians, but it's also probably the, the most ignored thing that Christians could easily change in their life and make an immediate difference in their world. And so, so I hope you'll pray for your pastor as he tries to get us to, to pray more in this teaching series. In fact, I'd love just to take a moment right now and, and, and locally as you're hearing this message you have a pastor and I, I would love for just you to take five seconds to just cheer so loudly and appreciate them right now for all that they do just just thank your pastor right now come on give it up give it up yeah that's right they deserve it because teaching God's word we're supposed to honor those who teach God's word it's, it's not an easy task because the devil is doing everything he can to keep us out of God's word because he knows the power of it and he's trying to keep you from praying. I, I heard it once said that, that, that prayer will keep you from sin, and sin will keep you from prayer. And so we're going to go after it throughout this month, and we're going to elevate the value of prayer in our lives and see what God will do in the unseen parts of our life, in our spiritual life. I'm so excited about what God's going to do in your life in your family's lives, in your friends' lives. And I hope that you'll be here every single week of this teaching series and you'll invite someone to, to join you because God's absolutely going to work in our lives. Well, this week, the unseen battle that I would like to speak to is, is the topic of, of worry. Worry. It comes in all shapes and sizes. And there's a lot of reasons why we worry. For example, we worry because of conflict and tension. That's one of the reasons why we worry. It's, it's uncomfortable. We don't like it. There's all kind of drama associated with it. Even, even in the unseen parts of our lives, like our minds, there's this, this like, well, if they say this, then I'm going to do that. And if they do this, then I'm going to say that. And there's just all this drama surrounding conflict that we want it to be resolved. But when it's left unresolved for days or weeks or months or even years, it creates so much worry in our life. What's going to happen? How is this ever going to be resolved or will it? It causes the worry to escalate inside of us. Another reason that we can worry is through obsessive planning about our future especially in the area of our, our finances or provision. And will, will I have enough? Will it work out? It might be thoughts about retirement or it, it might be about a promotion so you have enough to meet the budget. It, it, it might just be over planning your career path or will you ever find that special someone or what, what will it look like to, to get married or have kids one day? There's so many things that we can worry about. It feels like this puzzle of our mind. And we just finished a Mind Games teaching series here with Church Experience, and I hope that that was helpful for you as we talked about the different mind games that we battle. 
But I'm so excited about this Unseen Teaching Series because we, as we talk about prayer, you're going to see how God uses prayer to address some of those very mind games that we have been working through. Another area where we worry in our life is through the shifts in culture and in, in morality, the shifts in politics. Anytime you feel like you're swimming upstream and the current is against you and what you believe, then it can cause us to worry. We start to think about worst case scenarios. Well, this is shifting in culture and I don't believe that, so what if the worst case scenario happens, what then? And we can start to project out into the future. Anytime you start thinking of worst case scenarios, it can increase worry. Another thing that we can worry about is is dread over our past or about our future. So it's, it's usually a past decision and we're fearful or worried about a future consequence. It might be something that happened this last week and you're worried how it's gonna play out. Or it might be something from years ago in your life and you're worried about the the present or future potential consequence of those decisions. How does it affect you? How does it affect your family or future? All these kinds of things. These can increase worry in a person's life. And and maybe today you have one of these areas that's, that's causing you, these unseen parts of your life, causing you to carry stress and anxiety and fear and worry. Well, these unthing, unseen things inside of us can, can really influence, influence us more than we can imagine. And God's word in Luke chapter 12, it, it tells us so clearly that worry is not something that pleases our Lord. And, and Jesus speaks to this, Luke chapter 12, verse 22. And Jesus said to his disciples, he says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life. He's like, don't worry about it. No worries. Hey, would you help me out right now? Let's just have some fun. Would you just look at somebody next to you and just say, hey, no worries. <laughs> come on, come on, do it again. Just say, hey, no worries. No worries. <laughs> See, Jesus, he says, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food and the body more than clothes. Consider the ravens. They do not sow or reap. They have no storeroom or barn, yet God feeds them. And how much more valuable are you than birds? Who of you by worrying can add even a single hour to your life? Since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? (laughs) Yeah, I love that. It's like you can't even add a single hour to your life by worrying. So why do you worry about all these other things? I mean, if you can't even do the smallest thing through worrying, if you, if you can't accomplish even the smallest task, add an hour to your life. Then don't worry about the rest. It, it's, it's adjusting our perspective. Because worry is so often about our outlook on life, our perspective on life. And, and Jesus here is, is coaching us. He's helping us. He's, he's trying to relieve some of that pressure that we carry that we don't need to. He says, hey, I've got you. I've got you. And I can handle it. And by the way, I care about you more than the birds. But look, I take care of them. So, so don't worry about your life. No worries. Come on, somebody say no worries. <laughs> no, no worries. And so when I get around God's word, I, I start to get his, his perspective on things. And, and maybe you want to write this down today. God's presence improves my perspective. God's presence, when I, when I get in God's presence, when I pray, when I experience his presence, it helps me see life differently. I'm all worried about all these different aspects of my life, but then I, I get around God, I get in his presence, and my perspective shifts. It changes. I start to see the world differently. I start to see myself differently. And, and the worries start to lift as I lift up my, my prayers to God. So I want to challenge you to abandon worry. It's an unseen battle that destroys so many people that that you just don't need to, you don't need to play that game. You don't need to worry. Jesus says, do not worry. And when we dwell in the presence of God, we can overcome worry. And some of you, you're you're worriers. Your friends have told you, you worry all the time. I I don't think I'm a worrier at all, but the other day I had something in my head and I was just thinking about it obsessively over and over and I was talking about it around the house, I was thinking about it and Jennifer said, Brandon, like, why are you so worried about this? And I looked at her like, I'm not worried about it. And then I started thinking about it like, yeah, that's 
That's probably the best descriptive word to describe what I'm doing right now. I would have said I'm just thinking about it. I'm just strategizing. I'm just talking about it. I'm just, you know, reflecting on it. But in reality, I was actually worrying about it. And she said that, and it just opened my eyes like, yeah, no worries. I don't, I don't need to worry about this. God's got it. It's okay to plan, but I don't need to worry about it. I shouldn't be worried about this. God's, God's got it. But when I remain in the presence of God and I'm walking closely with him, and it transforms how I approach worry in every other aspect of my life. So how do you remain in the presence of God? Isn't that the challenge? How do you stay connected to God in prayer throughout the day? Well, I want you to check out this, this brief video that I hope will help you as you attempt to experience the presence of God. Check it out. Well, hey, I want to take a moment and share with you three practical things that I do that help me practice the presence of God throughout my days. First of all, I begin my day with a very special habit that really sets my direction throughout the whole day. And that's and very simply, before I check my phone, I check in with my Father in Heaven. And the reason that I do that and why it's so critical for me is if I don't check in first with my Father and I check my phone, I get lost in my calendar of events, I get lost in my task list, I get lost in the endless job of emptying inboxes, and instead, when I begin by getting lost in the presence of God, I find that all those other things have greater meaning, that I can have joy even when I'm going about my work, that I have clarity of direction and peace, and all of it flows out of how I begin my day in the presence of God. So before I rush into work, I walk with God. The practice I have at the end of my day that really helps, really book in my day, the beginning and the end, is I journal at the end of my day. Now, I don't put a lot of pressure on myself to write a lot, but I am a writer and so I enjoy it, but I, I would usually write at least a small paragraph and I'll reflect on the day's events, but a lot of times I'll write out a prayer. And sometimes it's just a simple prayer of gratitude, thanking God for something maybe in that day or in my life. Sometimes I'll bare my soul and I'll write out quite a few lines of what's going on and try to get out on paper what's going on in my mind. And those are two habits at the beginning and the end of my day that really helped me experience the presence of God. But I found that even after doing both of those practices for quite some time, I had a challenge of during the day, not getting so busy running forward and moving fast at what I was doing that, that, I, that I wouldn't forget to pray periodically throughout the day. Now, of course, I would pray for people as things come up, or I'd pray at meal times, but I really wanted to experience God's presence in everything that I did. And so something that I've done for quite a while that's really helped me, and something maybe just an idea for you. And, and by the way, I'd love to hear your creative ideas too. But this idea, um, it begins with this box that I have here. This box has a picture on the cover of Hotel Del Coronado. It's on the island of Coronado right outside San Diego. San Diego is where my wife Jennifer grew up. And it's where we got engaged. It's where we went for our honeymoon. It's where we've gone back for anniversary trips. It's a really special place to us. And so somewhere along the line, I picked up this box. And inside this box, I have some simple but special items that I'll occasionally carry with me throughout the day. And it might be something like a seashell that I have found on the beach, uh, some item that I found on one of my walks along the water. And, you know, it might be something like a, a pretty polished stem, like one of these beautiful stems that I picked up along the way. And whatever it happens to be, it, it might be something simple, like I said, like a seashell, or it might be something that has a lot of meaning. Uh, it might be this commitment stone. We gave out hundreds of these when our church started to people who made commitments to Jesus Christ. And so those have a lot of meaning to me. We've also given out these little crosses. This was made of olive tree wood uh, right outside Bethlehem where Jesus was born. And, you know, I, I have some things in here that have special meaning to me. I found this stone in a very special place to me uh, many years ago. Um, probably over a decade ago, my mother-in-law gave me this stone. It says passion on it. And I'll a lot of times keep this in my pocket while I'm preaching to remind me to have passion for what I'm preaching about because it's the most important message on earth. And, and I have a lot of other items in here that, that are special to me. Some of them carry meaning in themselves. This poker chip, <laughs> I did not win it actually at a poker game, but it was, it was given to me. And on the back, it says, no reserve, no retreat, no regret. 
And, and I could go on and on just different stones and shells and beautiful items that I have inside here. But what I'll do is when I begin a day, I'll, I'll take at random one of these, these items and I'll put it in my pocket. And then throughout the day, at, at periodic points when I stick my hand in my pocket or I'll just feel it there when I put my arm by my side, I'll, I'll feel that item in my pocket and it prompts me to pray. I, it'll just remind me, oh yeah, I, 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 want to, I want to experience God's presence. Like he's here, he is present. So I want to be present with him. And, and it'll sometimes prompt a short prayer. Sometimes it'll prompt me to remember that God is with me and I'll carry that with me for an extended amount of time. But my goal is, and your goal should be to experience the presence of God throughout every day because it's the greatest get to of our lives. Prayer is not meant to be a religious routine, but it's a spiritual life-giving exercise that we get to experience because God so loved us that he gave his son Jesus to open up the way for us to come with confidence before his throne. He's our king, the king of all kings, but he's also a loving father and friend. And it's amazing that we get to experience him. So whatever it takes for you to practice the presence of God, when you do it, you're gonna find the power of God fills your life and your mind. And so my hope for you is that you will experience the presence of God every day. Well, I really hope that some of those ideas help you practice the presence of God, which will decrease the worry in your life. You know, another thing that will lighten the load of worry in your life is sharing your worries with other believers, people who love Jesus and love you. Here at Church Experience, we call those circles life groups because we're experiencing life together in Christ. And, and those groups look different from place to place and from group to group. But the point is we want everybody to experience relationships with other believers who love on them and that they can share their worries with each other. And so if you want to get involved in a life group, you can fill out a response card any week in a service and tear that off and place it in the bucket at the end of the service. Or you can go to our Church Experience website, click on your campus, and then scroll down to life groups. And when you click on life groups, you'll see a list there of options at your campus and click on the group that you want to join. And then fill out that form and someone will reach out to you and help you get connected into that life group. So you can make some friendships that will help lighten the load. But a lot of times we worry because we don't have people in our lives that we can share it with. But other people help change our perspective. They, they help us see things more clearly, things that we don't see. And God has created us for relationships. He's created us to be in community inside his church. It's absolutely a gift from God. It's not a religious have to, it's, it's God's get to. You get to do this, so don't miss it, don't miss it. God's word says, when anxiety was great within me, God, your, your consolation brought me joy. You know why I love this verse? Because it admits that sometimes there's gonna be tension in our lives and it says that while it was going on, while the psalmist is having anxiety in his life, he says, your consolation, God, brought me joy. So in other words, I found joy inside my anxiety, joy inside my stress, joy inside my worry. I didn't have to get outside of my situation to go and find joy. I didn't have to get all the way through it to the other side before I could find joy again. I could find joy inside the struggle. I don't have to change my life circumstance for me to find joy. God can bring joy right inside my circumstances. What, what an amazing thing, God's joy instead of worry. What a great exchange. And the other night I decided to take my, my kids out to a park, give, some Jennifer, give Jennifer some alone time around the house. And so I took the four kids to a local park. It actually has a disc golf course at that park. And so the boys and I took our discs and the girls were so excited. They're younger. They wanted to play on the, on the jungle gym and the swing set and all that. So they, they were really excited about that. And so we get to the park, and I picture this amazing, you know, it's like an hour before sunset, this amazing family time together. And we go out on the park, and my youngest daughter, Macy, who's seven, she was playing around, and she stood still for a moment in the wrong place, and fire ants just started climbing all of her feet, and she got bit by these fire ants. And if you've been bit by fire ants before, that's no joke. <laughs> I mean, like, you're, like, nodding at the person next to you, like, that's no joke. Like, it is, is painful, and like they itch, and so she's uncomfortable. And my other daughter, like literally right about this time, she is, she's going across the monkey bars, and she puts her hand on one of the bars, 
And she's like, ew. And I'm like, what's wrong? What's wrong? And she's, her hand's got all this white junk. She's like, it's bird poop. And it's like all smeared all over her hand. Well, we're in the middle of a park. We don't, I don't have anything to clean her up with. So I'm trying to like go get something out of the vehicle and figure out how I can help. And I'm like, this is not going how I pictured. And then my son Jalen throws one of his discs and it veers off with the wind and it lands in the water. But it goes down in the water, it sinks, and so we can't even see it. And one of my boys is saying, well, Dad, we can just go in and get it. And one of my other kids, because we live here in Florida, is like looking out the water, is like, Dad, but is that a gator out there? Now, I couldn't see the gator, but as soon as one of my kids said, is there a gator out there, I'm like, nope, <laughs> we're leaving it. <laughs> I'll get you a new disc, forget about it, right? It's like, we ain't taking that risk. Uh, my, myself and my other son, who didn't lose the disc, we at different points threw our disc, and it like landed in this little canal ditch that had some water in it, but we went to get it out, and we did get them out, but it looked like sewer water, like legit sewer water. It was, it was nasty, all kinds of junk floating. I'm like, this is gross, man, but we're going to get these discs out of there, and, and we did and washed them off, but it just did not go how I'd imagined. I was driving home, and I was just kind of laughing to myself, like, that is not like the picturesque family night that I had planned in my head when I was like, hey, kids, let's go spend some time at the park, some quality time with dad. It's like, like one kid's getting bit with fire ants. The other kid's got bird poop. We're lo- losing discs. I mean, this is just crazy. Do you, you ever have like life just like fall apart unexpectedly on you? And I'm thankful that all those problems can be solved and they were minor problems. But, but you know what I'm talking about, right? You've had that day when nothing works right. Right, just the technology problem piles up, and then the, the kid problem, or the school problem, or the work problem, problem with your boss. And it's just like the worry and the anxiety, and it just starts to compile. So, so how do you have that joy that God's word speaks of here in Psalm 94? How, how do you have this, when, I, when anxiety was great within me, I still had joy, the joy of the Lord. How, how, do, you, how do you find and experience that? Well, the way that you access that is primarily through the presence of God. And when, it, when you take away everything else in life, if everything else goes poorly, I hope it doesn't, but if it does and you, you break it all down, it, it really comes back to the good news of Jesus. That God loved you so much while you were in the middle of your mess and when everything had broken down in your life, when, when you were at the end of yourself, God provided a solution for your pain, for your sin. And he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on a cross so that you can be forgiven when you receive him in your life by faith. The payment of your penalty for your sins, Jesus paid. And he paid it all. And if you'll, if you'll humble yourself and receive him into your life, you can be forgiven of your sins. That's the gospel. That's the good news of Jesus Christ. And, and, and when it comes down to it, where do you find peace? Even if everything else around you is, is a mess. You can find peace when you focus your eyes on that good news. God, your grace is enough. If that's all I have to hold on to, I'm going to hold on to that. You have redeemed me from my past. You've given me a future. You have surrounded me with your presence and adopted me into your family, your church. And you've given me a home in heaven when I pass away from this life. What else could I ask for? So you can find peace in the presence of God even by his grace alone. Now, God certainly wants to help you with your problems, but he wants to help you do something else when worry is is strong in your life. And I want you to write this down. Flip my worry into worship. Write that down. We want to flip my worry into worship. Next time you start worrying about something, well, I don't know how that's going to work out, just turn it into praise and say, God, I don't know, but you know. (laughs) And I'm not in control of this. I want to be, but God, you're in control. And God, I don't know how these numbers are going to add up, but God, you're a great provider. And so I'm trusting you in faith, and I'm asking for your help. And and Father, I'm feeling really uncertain about this situation. I'm kind of worried about it, but God, you are someone I can be certain of. I can have confidence in you. I can trust in you. Just flip your worry into worship. Next time you start to feel worried about something, just start worshiping God right through your worry. Well, God's presence is not the promise of no problems, but it's the provision of his peace inside my problems. And the more you practice the presence of God in your life and in your home, is putting on worship music, 
It's praying it as you commute to work. It's opening up God's word in the morning and reading it. It's, it's the more you experience the presence of God, that, that joy is going to increase and the worries are going to decrease. I love Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 7, where it says, Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots into the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. Hey, did you catch that? It has what? Come on, everybody say no worries. Yeah, that's right. There it is again. No worries. You don't have to have worry when you have your confidence in the Lord. The person who trusts in the Lord, the person who puts their confidence in the Lord is like this tree that puts its roots down into the soil. And that, that water nourishes that tree so it does not fear the heat. You can't stand the heat, get out the kitchen, right? I mean, like, you, you know what heat's like. You know what the pressure's like. You feel it, so do I. We all have pressure. It's part of life. But you don't have to fear the heat when you're rooted in the presence of God. You don't have to worry about drought because your soul is nourished not by the nutrients of this life, but, but your roots go down deep and they're, they're connected into your spiritual network, your spiritual connection to your Father in heaven. So through prayer, we access the peace of God that overcomes and surpasses the worries and the problems in our life. You know, prayer and worship help us abandon confidence in the world and attach to confidence in God. I was working around my house the other day. I was doing some writing or doing some messages, preparing for a meeting or something. And, and I realized that my battery on my laptop was about to die. And thankfully, I noticed it because I was in the middle of a project. And so I, I went over to my desk and I set my laptop down right next to the power cord. And I, and I try to finish what I'm working on. And after I'd been working for an, another minute or two, I, I realized, I looked down and I saw the power cord was not connected in my laptop. In, in my haste and in my focus on what I was doing, I brought the laptop over to the power source, but I didn't plug it in. And how many of you know, if you're next to the power cord, but you don't plug it in, your device is still going to die. Maybe you've done that before. But once you plug it in, then that battery starts to charge. It starts to increase. And even though it might be down to 1%, when you plug it into the power source, it starts to increase little by little. You know, it's not, not enough for you to be close to the things of God, to be around the things of God, to, to attend a church service, to, to know about God. See, it's not enough just to know about him. You want to know him personally and experience his presence to connect into your eternal power source. See, you can be around God and still live like a total unbeliever. You, you can still live in sin and know, know that God exists. You can know about him. You can know the right answers and still live far from God. It's a different thing to know about God and, and to know him and be known by him to be walking in relationship with him, to experience his presence throughout the day. And part of overcoming worry comes from this unseen part of your life of practicing the presence of God, something that, that others around you, for the large part, they won't even see it. It's just something that happens inside of you. But as you walk with God through the, the worries of life and the cares of life, you will have a joy that others can't even understand. You'll have a peace inside of storms that others just can't even imagine. Because you've practiced the presence of God in your life. And part of overcoming worry is getting into the word of God. Because all over God's word, there's, there's his voice speaking to us through our, our worries. And you know, by the way, some people divide prayer and reading God's word. It's, it's two different things. There's the Bible and prayer, but really it's, it's one and the same. And you can pray as you read the Bible. It can be an interactive conversation. You can read a little bit and pray because, you know, God's word, it's, it's living and active. It's the voice of God. It's the word of God. It's his words written down by men, inspired by God. It's his words. And so part of prayer is, is not just speaking to God. It's listening to him. And so as you listen to his word and as you pray, and there's this interactive relationship. And so I want you to write this down. I defeat worry with God's word. Write it down. That's, that's how you defeat worry. It's, it's with God's word. 
You defeat worry with God's word. And because when you look throughout God's word, I mean, it's all over the Old Testament and the New Testament. Let me just give you a couple for examples. Psalm 55, verse 22. Cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. How about the New Testament? Look at this one. 1 Peter 5, 7. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Did you see that? Just give your burdens to him. Give your worries to God in worship and see what he does. Here's the final lesson. Write this down. I lift my burden in prayer, and God lifts the load from my shoulders. That's really what this message is all about. When I, when I lift the unseen burdens in my life to God in prayer, he lifts those loads off my shoulders. His shoulders are stronger. They can handle the load. The load might be crushing you, but when you lift it to him in prayer, he lifts it off your shoulders. There was a time in my life not too long ago when I felt a tremendous load on my back. God had called our family to step out and leave a very comfortable and very good situation to go plant a church here in the Tampa Bay area where I live. And, and it was a tremendous calling. I felt it deeply. And we let go of some great opportunities. We sold our house. We pulled our kid out of a great school that we had just enrolled him in. He was a kindergartner, just got started in it. Uh, said goodbye to our families that lo- both lived uh, relatively close by and, and moved to a city where we knew hardly anybody along with two other families that, that moved along with us. And we began the journey of planting a new church. And I respect church planters so much. Our, our church collectively has a vision to start five churches a year because we believe in the need for thousands more churches in our country. And we want to play at least a small role in God's great big vision to see our country and the world come back to Jesus and come to follow him. But in order for that to happen, we need more churches. We need more life-giving Christian outposts in every city where people can hear the good news of Jesus and come into relationship with him and join community with other believers. We just, we just need more churches and healthier churches and Bible-teaching churches and strong, life-giving churches. We just we need more of them. And God had called us to go start a church, and so it was, it was a tremendous calling but a tremendous pressure that I was carrying. And it was about that time that I had in my Bible as really serving as a bookmark, this program. And this program was for Jennifer's papa, Chester Raymer, great man of God. He was a military guy. He served at his church for decades, faithful farmer, family man, just an incredible guy. Passed away in his late 90s, loving the Lord with all his heart, soul, mind, and strength. And I had this program from his funeral that I attended, just tucked into my Bible. I think it just kind of stayed there since the, the funeral service. And and it was in that time when we were assessing a, the calling to follow the Lord into church planning that, that this bookmark turned into more than a bookmark for me. Is every time I'd open the Bible each day to read God's word, I would see this, this verse that was Jennifer's papa's life verse. And it was on the back of the program. And I, I would read that verse every day, day after day after day. And it was, it was, it was something that started to seep into my soul. It was something that started to have great meaning to me and assurance for me as I was carrying this heavy load for going to start a church in a new place, in a new city. And it was around that time that I had the opportunity to go speak at a men's retreat up in northern Michigan. And so my good friend and brother-in-law, Brent, went along with me as a prayer partner. And we, we were crashing one evening after communicating and teaching these men. And, and we crashed into our, our, our beds and there was a there was a nightstand with a lamp on it between our two beds. And I, I reached over before I turned the light out and I saw these little pieces of paper on this nightstand. There was two of them. And I just picked up the first one and it was a Bible verse. And it was like a verse in Thessalonians or something. It was a neat verse. I thought, oh, that's, that's cool. And I, I picked up the other one just really out of curiosity. And, and I read it and, and I couldn't believe what I was seeing because out of all 31,000 plus verses in the Bible, of 31,000 verses, the verse that someone had placed on my nightstand, in their mind, no relation to me, and had, having no idea <laughs> that this was the same verse that I was reading day after day after day. The same verse that was on the back of this program from Jennifer's Papa. The same verse that I felt like God was speaking right into my soul. And the same verse that I feel led to to read to you today. The verse is Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. 
And I want to read this over your life because there might be some here who are dealing, dealing with fear. They're dealing with worry. And God wants to use his word right now to lift your spirits. Look at this verse with me. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. What an amazing verse. God is with us in our worries. He says, do not fear. I've got you. My righteous right hand, I'll uphold you. I'll strengthen you. I'll be with you in the fire. So don't you worry. You flip that worry into worship. You put your confidence in me. Trust in me. Know that I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I'm with you in the storms. I'm fighting those battles with you. I'm summoning those mountains that you're climbing. I will never leave your side. So trust in me and do not worry. But instead, walk in my presence through prayer and worship me. And when you do that, friends, you will find the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Right on, right on. Before our usher team comes by to collect our response cards and receive our tithes and offerings, here's a few important things happening with our CE family. Hitting the road this summer? Take Kid Experience with you. Your family may be taking a road trip or a vacation during the summer months, but your kids do not have to miss any of the fun in KE. Check out KE online on the Kids and Students page of the CE website and watch as a family on the go. As the ushers come forward to collect our response cards and receive our tithes and offerings, there's no better investment to make beyond raising up more followers of Jesus to represent Him to our world. The generosity of God's people fuels the expansion of God's church in the world. Would you please consider joining the faithful givers a part of CE who are sacrificing so that others can find and follow Jesus through CE? You can give on our website, the CE app, in service, or by mailing in a check. Every gift makes a big difference. Thank you so much. Please stand and join us in a closing song of worship.
Man, what an amazing service that was. So glad that you could be here to experience it with us. If it's your first time with us, make sure you head over to churchexperience.tv slash connect. We would love to connect with you. We'd also love to hear what you thought about today's service. So if you have any questions, any comments, any prayer requests, head over there as well. We'd love to get back to you and we would love to be praying for you. Well, that's week one of Unseen in the Books. Hope to see you back here next week for week two. But until then, we'll see you 